Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Okay, um, I want to talk to you today about uh, the narcissist in the church. You know, narcissists love the church because they love it so much because um, the supply is plentiful in a church setting. You see, the narcissist craves attention. He gets that at church. And um, narcissists, you'll find that they, they want to be up front. So they're going to be sitting, either sitting in those chairs right up there on the pulpit or they're the pastor, whether it's man or, or a woman. The narcissist wants to be out front. So you don't have to worry about it, trying to look for him in some capacity at church. He wants to have a position of something. This way he can, he can get the supply that he needs and influence people. Now, <clears throat> I was looking at something, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the other day where uh, the pastor called in, because he called in one of the members <clears throat> of his church into his office, but he had uh, some other folks in there. I guess that was the, the cheering squad or whatever that was in there with him. Uh, like they were going to, you know, like, for instance, this is an example. You go, you at work, and you called into the uh, the uh, manager's office, and if he's had some other people in there, you know it's trouble right away. You know something, something is going to happen that's not to your benefit. <laughs> so anyway, the pastor called this member in because they felt, that he wasn't giving enough money in his tithes. Okay. You know, narcissistic people are all about getting as much money out of you as they can. I mean, that's part of them draining you. So they were all over this man and reading scripture to him. And, you know, he, he, he was an intelligent man and he... You know, <laughs> he knew that the tithing had nothing to do with uh, money. You know, the reason it came up in those days, people were all farmers, so it was food. You see, so anyway, they couldn't, they couldn't back him down, but it almost turned into a scuffle over money. Now, the, the, <laughs> you go to your house of worship, and they are badgering you about money or anything. But something is wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. Giving should be from your heart, not from fear. Not from fear. You won't be blessed giving out of fear. There's no blessing there. I don't care what they say, the narcissists will tell you, the more you give, the more, you know, the more you give to the, he'll say the church, but really he's talking about himself. The more you give to me, the more blessings you have. That That's a lie. That's a lie. So don't, <laughs> don't fall for that. And they're constantly throwing, you know, I told you that the narcissist would tweak information to suit his own purposes. And this is happening so much. And I'm talking about the church because a lot of people go to church for guidance, for guidance and understanding. You see, they want to understand the God that they're serving and, you know, what is required to live a happy and healthy and spiritual life. But think about it. If you're going to church, your, your place of worship now, supposedly a holy place, and the people in charge are narcissists or narcissistic, which is nothing but pure 
evil. Nothing but pure evil. And you go there looking for guidance from these demons. Now, I'm not saying that every pastor and a minister or whatever, you go to your house to worship. I'm not saying that they're all narcissistic, but what I am saying, you need to keep your eyes open. You don't need to be going there if you think that they could be narcissists because they are not telling you the truth. They are not telling you the truth. They're tweaking information because they know you're not going to read it for yourself. And, and plus, I'm going to say this. When the Bible was written, it was written in a way that uh, it would be confusing for regular people to understand it. That's why in the beginning, only the priest were allowed to read the scriptures. And I think I think in the Catholic Church is still that way. Not sure. It's a long time since I've been there. But uh yeah, during those days, only the priest was sanctioned to read the scriptures to the people. Which means that the people were getting his interpretation of the scriptures. Now, here we come down to today. Today. If your pastor is a, your pastor, your deacon, or whoever is over you, your Sunday school teacher, whoever she is, if they are over you and trying to teach you any holiness, that's absurd. The demon is only there to, to manipulate you and to trick you. And what they do is they hide behind the religion. <clears throat> And do to you as they will. Because there you are open to whatever they say and do. And it's funny because um, in many of these churches, <clears throat> I hear that fights are breaking out. <laughs> because some narcissists are standing up and telling people's business right from the pulpit and and then he's chastising people that they're not paying enough money in offering and things like that. All that is narcissistic. You don't need to be going there. You need to depart from the narcissist. That's right. And if you go, if you're going to um, your place of worship and he's telling you, all right, come. Come back to the church on Saturday, Saturday morning, because we're going to all go out in the neighborhood, in the neighborhood, and gather souls to come back, you know, come and invite them to the church. <clears throat> you correct me if I'm wrong. But if you read your Bible, I don't think that God asked you to go out <laughs> in the neighborhood to bring those souls back. I don't think he did. Now that's if you follow the God of the Bible. Because let's not be let's not be in the dark here. There are a lot of gods out there. Even your God say, say, um, don't worship any other gods before me. That lets you know there are other gods out there. You chose to worship this God. Other religions choose to worship their God. You see? But the narcissist, the narcissist is in all religions because he loves, I say church, but you know, um, 
other services have different names, you know. You come, you go, and I'm not sure of the names, but they don't they, they don't call it church. You know, you come to the temple or to the synagogue or or wherever, wherever. And um, the thing that that you should be aware of is this narcissist, this demon who's weaving in and out of these religions. And if you open your eyes, they're easily easy to spot. Easy to spot if you don't go into your place of worship in an emotional state. If you go there with a clear mind and actually listen and see what's going on. You know, it's so funny. Um, when I was growing up, it was a unheard of to have these dancers dancing in the church. They call them praise dancers now. When I <laughs> when I was growing up, that was unheard of. But now, now you got these people flying all over the church, and that's entertainment. That has nothing to do with spirituality. It's entertainment for you. Just like when the choir sings. It's entertainment to get you in the spirit. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. If your leader is truthful and honest and real and not a narcissist. But if he's a narcissist, yeah, you must get you all emotional and everything, you know, because he's not really feeding you anything that's going to better your life. But at least when you leave church, you feel like you've been to a party, you know? Yeah. You talk about the, um, the sinners that go out to the club, but when you go to the church, you're, not, you, you're doing the same thing they're doing at the club. The only thing about it, you might not be drinking or smoking. But you're actually doing the same thing they're doing out there at the club. You're there for a party to have a good time and to praise your God. Your God. You see? You see? And I'm not saying anything about, about that. Anything about that. That is your free will to, to praise and worship who you choose whoever you choose. But <clears throat> beware of the narcissist pretending to lead you to the God that you choose to worship. You know, I'm going a little slow here because I really want you to understand what I'm saying here. The narcissist knows that you come to the house of worship to, to worship the God that you chose for yourself. This is the God that I'm going to worship. Okay. Now, what the narcissist will do, he'll make it in a way that you are not really worshiping the God you think that you're worshiping. I, I know that's a heavy statement. But listen to me. Now, I'm going to go with the, uh, the Christian religion because that's the one I was raised in. Okay. Worshiping the God in the Bible. The God in the Bible. Okay. Now, if you go to church and your pastor is a narcissist. Okay. And I don't care. You know, how how long he been to theological school or all of that. You know, I don't care anything about that. If he is a narcissist, you may not be worshiping the God of the Bible. 
He make you think you are. But you may not. Because number one, you don't read anything for yourself. He knows that. And if you don't understand something, you're going to go to him for him to explain it to you. You see? But if you put your own thinking caps on, on tight, you may wake up to some serious things because this has something to do with your soul. Your soul. The narcissist <clears throat> is there to destroy you and lead you down a dark, a very dark path. You see? And he'll tell you, he'll tell you that, yeah, well, you know, God said this over here, but then when he came over here, you know, he gave you forgiveness for everything he said not to do over here and you did it well now is what is it grace he you know through grace he forgives you that's what the narcissist will tell you because you haven't read you don't know what he said the narcissist he is not there to lead you to true spirituality. He's there to turn you a different direction. Making you believe that you're on the right path. But if you if you listen to your own intuition, something inside will tell you that something isn't quite right. If you're not there all emotional in the church, jumping all around and all this kind of nonsense. When you do that, you're in his spirit. You think you're in your God spirit. You're in the spirit of the narcissist who is a demon. He's a demon. And you've been going there so long, you don't know the difference. You don't know what a God spirit feels like. Because you've listened to the demon too long. People. Spiritual warfare is happening right now. Right now. Right in front of your eyes. Right in front of your eyes. And we were all born with an intuition, which is our protection against negative forces. Your intuition tells you when you do something right, when you do something wrong. You really don't need anybody to tell you that was wrong or that was wrong. You see, first thing they tell you is, uh, when you go to these uh, religious organizations, they tell you that you, you was born in sin. You was born a bad, a bad person. You was already born a bad person. And the only way that you can become a good person is to come to us and we can help you to be a better, a good person. That's a lie. That's a lie. You were born perfect. The universe doesn't make any bad people. People make bad people. They make bad choices. That's their free will. You were born in this life to learn lessons, to be happy, and to ascend in your knowledge and in your spirituality. That's why you are here. You're not here. You're not here to run off to church every Sunday, Wednesday, reading the Bible and whatever. 
whatever the other religions do. You know, they all the same because it's all big business anyway. So they have you jumping through all these hoops and everything, trying to get to a better place. I'm here to tell you, you already at the better place. You already here. You're going to waste this life. This beautiful life. You're going to waste your whole life. Working to go to a better place. If you think about that, that's pure nonsense. That's nonsense. You're at the better place. You're here. You, you know, you came here with a gift to help others. Not to come here and compete with everybody. And put people down, stepping on people, fighting people. You don't come here for that. That's the narcissist that has made people believe that. I was reading something the other day that said that 62% of the population in the world is narcissistic. That's scary. That's very, very scary. But people take on these traits because the narcissist makes you believe that this is the way to grow. This is the way to, to get over. This is the way to be wealthy. This is the way to you know, all the external things, but nothing for inside. And it's the inside that matters, not the external stuff. You see, not the external stuff. Now, uh, a lot of the uh, churches now, you know, they, they write down the member's income. The narcissist has a, a ledger with every member's income. So he knows what kind of ties you need to be paying. And if you don't pay those ties, he's going to, he's going to call you on the carpet. And you're going to, you're going to do it because you want to go to heaven. People, you wasting your heaven. You already here. You wasting it. You throwing it away. You throwing it away. Now I know it's I know it's people out here to say they died and they went to heaven and they saw all these things and whatever. You know, your mind is like a computer. And your mind is capable of more things than you realize. You don't even realize how powerful your mind is. Now, this is going to be what I believe. I'm not going to. This is my belief right here. I'm going I'm to throw out this disclaimer. I believe that whatever your concept of heaven is, when you pass away, that's the projection that you will, you will experience during your transition into the other dimension. Okay, that's what I believe. Now, I, I'm gonna leave it right there and let you think about that, okay? Now, let's go back. To the narcissist in church. The narcissist in church. And you know, all religions have a place that when you, after you suffer here on this earth, you're going to go to a better place if you, you know, you do right here. All of them have that. There's some, there's some rules and regulations, something you got to do here to get there. That's narcissistic. And I'm sure the people that put that Bible or that book or whatever together were all narcissists, probably, because it's about power and control. Narcissists 
is about power and control. And that organized religions, that's the perfect vehicle to control people. And the supply for the narcissist is plentiful. Plentiful. Now, I know one thing that, that you can't disagree on. Especially with the Christian religion. That that religion was forced on you. You ain't volunteer with that for that. You ain't volunteer for that. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, people, the young people right now. I'm talking about the origin. When that, when that Christianity first came out, Constantine, way back, he forced that on the people. He said, this is going to be the new religion. He forced it on people. That narcissist forced that religion. Now, the Christianity is trying to wipe out all the other. They want one religion, period. That's what they want. People, be careful. Because it is narcissistic driven. Whether your past is a narcissist or not. If a narcissist around there, I can tell you that. He's somewhere. He, he's there somewhere influencing somebody. Because it's a perfect, it's a perfect place for the narcissist. It's perfect for him. He loves it. You see? He can go in there and he can slip around the sisters. Especially the narcissistic pastors. They sleeping with the sisters and with the brothers. And the wives know. Many of the wives, they know their husbands are cheating. They may not know that he's sleeping with men yet, but they know that he's cheating. But what can they say? I mean, they're kind of trapped in a situation because they like their position. You know, the first lady of the church, they like their position and they don't want to expose him for cheating with women but they will expose him when they find out that he's also been cheating with men. If you know he's a narcissist, you don't need to be with him. And members don't need to be going to his congregation, being a part of his congregation. You're, the con you're in the congregation of the demon. Of the demon. That's something for people to think about and think about it long and hard. Listen, you don't really need anybody to tell you what's right and what's wrong. The universe gave you your own intuition for that. You, your own intuition for that. You see, when man, man decided that all these people out here just having their own religions, that don't make any sense. We're going to gather all these people around and we're going to tell them we're going to be in charge. It's power. We're going to be in charge and we're going to tell you how you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to act and all of that. And then you already being groomed to be a follower. A follower. You perfect. You perfect for them. Because whatever they say. You're looking up to them. Because they know. You know. They've made you feel good. With the. You know. With their entertainment. And all is good in the world. Until you go back home. And face your reality. You see. The narcissist. He's not going to help. Even if you go crawling to him. Trying to tell him. You know. I'm having some trouble at home. And if he'll sit back. And 
Yes, sister so-and-so. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sister, we gonna pray for you. That's what he'll tell you. Send you on your way. You see? But don't you miss putting that money in that, in that offering basket or you're going to have another conversation. And and your your issue, what is he going to do? Nothing. But talk about you. He'll go back. He'll tell his people all about sister so-and-so. And, and a lot of them will get up in the church and tell it to the congregation and call themselves trying to teach the congregation a lesson from your out of your pain. If you go anywhere and you spot the narcissist is on the pulpit, you need to grab your bag and get out of there. You don't need to hear anything he has to say to you. It's a lie anyway. But I understand people, you know, you get into the habit, especially if your family did it, it's a generational thing. You know, my family, my family been, been uh, in the church for generations and generations and generations, and they all freaking narcissists. <laughs> all of the men anyway. For generations, generations, and it may be the same for you, you know. And then because I didn't comply, you know, they kind of booted me out of the family. But hey, I wanted to find the truth, the real truth, and I realized that what they were saying is not the truth, and so I went on my own journey. Read a lot of things, read a lot of books, looked into a lot of religions. So, and then I could choose fairly. I didn't follow, don't follow the crowd. I, I've never been that kind of person, and you shouldn't either. We, we were taught to, to be followers. You really shouldn't be a follower. But I'm telling you this because it's a hard thing to leave a religion that you've been brought up in. And especially if you're older now, you done spent all your, you know, all your young years in there. You're older now, getting ready, you know, feeling like it's not going to be long till you go to the other place, the other place. And you've been trusting, you've been trusting. And those pure heart, nothing to worry, nothing to worry. But those that follow the traits of the narcissist, <laughs> then you'll receive what the narcissist receives. And it might not be what you expect. I, I think it's extremely important for you to care for your own soul and don't put your soul in the hands of anybody else seek spirituality for yourself for yourself find out the truth for yourself don't just run down there for somebody else to tell you. That's where people get in trouble. Oh, he he must know. He's the vicar of God. Oh, come on. Who said that? Who said? <laughs> Some of these um, ceremonies I sit back and watch, they're comical to me. Pure comical. And people... The, and the people who are ooing and aahing about it are the people who were forced, were forced to accept it. So, something is missing there. Think about it. 
anything that's good for you wouldn't have to be forced on you. You were freely accepted. But if anything makes you feel bad, or if you don't do it, you're going to die, your intuition will tell you that that's not good for you. Your intuition will tell you that. Some people are afraid to listen to their intuitions because that makes them feel on their own. That's power to be on your own. That is power. Believe me. People get in trouble because they feel like they need somebody else to tell them what to do. You don't. People tell you things through their perception of it. Now, the narcissist, of course, he's going to tell you through his perception. Even if he's not a narcissist, he's going to tell you through his perception of it. It may not be a true perception of what it was meant to be. But your intuition will tell you. Your own intuition will tell you. Trust it. Always trust your own intuition. Spirituality is about you and the universe. There's no in-between man that's got to come and preach to you every, every Sunday morning and tell you how to do it. There's no in-between man. It's you and the universe. And I know, I know that that's a big step, you know, for if you're old, already used to having a follower, a leader. If you're already used to being a follower and you have a leader, I know that can be kind of scary to step out there on your own. But just remember, look at your look at your religion. Really look at it. Are you afraid of something in that religion? You know, I hear a lot of people say, I don't feel nothing. I fear God. In spirituality, there's no fear, period. The universe is not fearful. Not going to strike you with lightning, you know, if you don't do this, you don't do that. But maybe the God that you serve does. He, he may strike you down. Understand? People, I know, I know <laughs> this this one got a little deep. I didn't mean to take you so deep. But I would just like for you to to open your eyes and your ears. You know, what they say? Listening ears. <laughs> Listening ears. So you don't be deceived. Listen to your own intuition. Your own intuition. When you go to your house of worship, don't go there all emotional. And when somebody's standing and teaching something, you know, they had a Sunday school first and then they had the whatever. Ask questions. Ask real questions and listen to the answers. Don't let them sit up and tell you something they saw on TV. Because the real thing is they probably don't know any more than you know. That's kind of my point. And just because your minister went to theological school, he probably don't know no more than you know either. He He's only spouting what he learned in school. And if his narcissist was a teacher, guess what? Guess what? Whatever you getting is twisted. The universe is not confusing at all. It gives you peace. You feel love because you love yourself. You're, 
you you can lead yourself. You're not you're not afraid. You don't live your life in fear of anything. Anything. But you know that there are challenges coming, but those challenges are to teach you something. Even you going if you're going to your house of worship and it's a narcissist there, he's there to teach you that you shouldn't be there. That this is wrong. The narcissist comes to teach you, teach us all a lesson, but we don't we don't learn it. We end up following the narcissist, thinking that's the way because he's showing you all the glitz and glamour that you'll receive if you follow him, which you won't, because he's he's just going to destroy you. He's never going to give give you anything. Just be careful. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Because this depends on your soul. Your soul. Now, I'm 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 going to end this soon, but I just want to give you some little tidbits. If you go to your house of worship and when you come out of it, you don't know any more than when you went in. I mean, that was a waste of time. Of course, unless you just went there for the entertainment, just to see, just to, to see and to be seen, unless you just went there for that. But if you went there for spiritual awakening and when you left, you didn't know any more than when you went in, you need to question that. You need to look at that. And if anybody makes you feel bad or sad or anything like that, my advice, don't ever go back. Under any, I don't care if he comes to your house. Well, sister, whatever. You know, you can't be like that because God, you know, hey. <laughs> Let them go. Let them go. All the word you need is inside you. So, I think I'm going to close it here and just let you know that the universe loves you. And uh, I hope that I said something in this video that can help somebody. I, I realized that I dug in pretty deep with the whole church thing. It's because the the church influences so many, so many lives. And a lot of the leaders are narcissists. This is the point. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. So, thank you again for watching this video. And don't forget to keep those comments coming. I look forward to them. And uh, I hope to see you next time.